All right, I'm going to cover something that nobody really wants to hear. I'm going to cover spun bearings. All right, let's before we get started, um if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please hit the like, subscribe and the notification bell if you are a returning subscriber. Thank you for being our loyal subscriber. And today I want to cover spun bearings, the noise we never want to hear, and it goes something like this. What a horrendous noise. Um, I'm sure if you're uh, following my channel, at some point in your life, you know, as a car enthusiast, you've heard this type of noise, whether it be from your own engine or from your friend's engine or, you know, just a random guy in a parking lot. And, you know, it's the reasons I make the reason I make these type of video is to kind of educate you on why these things happen and how to prevent it from happening in your own vehicle. So, um, as always, I'm not trying to get so scientific. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So hopefully it's easier for you guys to understand and, you know, find ways to prevent from this, uh, this happening to your own engine. Okay. So let me get, uh, let me get my whiteboard out here and then I'll it'll be a little easier for me to explain with the diagram. Okay. All right, guys. So here's my fantastic drawings for today. Um, on the left here, you will see a crankshaft. Basically, this is a crankshaft. The blue arrows are pointing to where the crank main journals are, okay? And the red arrow is pointing to where your rod, connecting rod basically connects to. So this is your rod journals. Um, these parts right here are called journals. All right, this is where, basically where bearings would go, okay? Now, if you look at the diagram on the right, basically what it is, is this red inner circle, if I can draw a better inner circle, all right, red inner circle, let's say that's your crankshaft journal. Okay, so that's this part. The black part is the bearings. And then the red part out here is your connecting rods. So basically, the bearing sits between the connecting rod and the actual journal on your crankshaft. And between, between the bearings and the journal and the connecting rods, there is going to be oil. This is where engine oil is basically doing most of its job. This is the most important part of engine oil. Okay. So it's going to lubricate in between the journal and the bearing. So technically, it's, it's making, making your connecting rod float on top of the actual journal on your crank. The reason for this, okay. So how how does welding work? Welding works by heating up metal together, okay? When you heat up metal together, they basically form, they forge together. They come into, they make one piece. Um, so if you think about it, you're spinning the crankshaft with the connecting rod connected to it. If there's no oil in between these metal parts, they're just gonna seize together and become one solid piece of metal from all the heat that it's going to create so that's why there is a bearing and that's why there's oil in between these parts that way the heat is minimized the friction is minimized and we don't have to worry about these things seizing together pretty simple concept right so why why do you think spun bearing happens and why do we even call it spun bearing but it's just damaged bearing okay so basically what happens is the bearing starts to touch the metal surfaces um, and while it's spinning it starts making metal on metal contact and when it does that it scores it and at the end of the day it starts creating horrible horrible noise and if you keep driving it like that it will end up seizing the uh, seizing the engine so let's see what can cause things like that all right one one is heat why does heat cause something like that? That actually is explained by another video that I did about oil weights. 
okay? So if you have wrong type of oil weights, extra heat inside the engine can actually turn that oil viscosity into something that's water-like. When oil runs like water, then you're not oiling anything. You're not actually um, lubricating, and it can definitely cause metal-on-metal -metal contact, okay? I'm going to actually link that above here on the top. So if you haven't seen my oil weight video, definitely uh, look into that because that will they'll basically kind of give you an understanding of what the oil weights are and how they work. Okay. So getting back to this, what's another thing that can happen is oil pressure might be low. Okay. If oil pressure is low, not enough oil gets into these crevices, not enough oil gets to your bearings and again, creates metal on metal contact. So it could be bad viscosity from heat. It could also be um, bad pressure. One other thing that it can be is actually, well, I mean, I guess it can't be one other thing, but it could actually be from you not doing your oil changes on time. Um, it could also be from low oil, okay? So if you're not doing your oil changes on time, what's going to happen? So when oil runs through your engine, it runs through the oil passages, you know, it goes through your, your bearings. And from here, whatever gunk or metal flakes or whatever it may actually come in contact, it will grab it and it will run into your oil filter. So your oil filter looks like something like this. Okay, So it has filter material in, inside. So oil will go in, dirty oil goes in, all the bad stuff gets caught here. And then clean oil comes back out and it will go back into the system and it will keep doing that. It will rinse and repeat. The problem is the oil filter, when it gets all clogged up with bad stuff, one, it's going to lower your oil pressure because now it has to move through all the dirty stuff, right? And two, it might not catch all of it. And another thing, while the oil is traveling back through the engine system, and it's, you know, it's doing its whole full circle around the engine, the dirty stuff could actually get stuck inside the oil passages. When the oil passages get dirtied up, the oil pressure again drops. The oil passages can get clogged. The oil pump itself could get clogged. I mean, there's so many things that can happen if you don't do your oil changes on time. So make sure you keep on top of your oil changes. Another thing, low oil. All right. Why does low oil happen? So it could be a couple of things. It could be that your engine has bad clearances from factory or, you know, it's just old and it burns a lot of oil. Yeah, I mean, that happens with, you know, you know, not not good clearances on, you know, piston rinse and things like that could actually cause it to burn oil. When it does, you can technically see your oil level drop as you drive the car. You need to keep on top of that. When the oil level drops, you know how uh, when you take out a dipstick from your car, you know, it looks something like this. It'll have a line here that says min, and it'll have a line here that says max, right? And if your oil is like here, and you're missing a little bit, most people will be like, oh, that's fine. You know, I'm not at the minimum level yet. There's some they're they're true to a sense. If you're just driving normally, let's say you're just commuting back and forth to work, yeah, it's okay to be low by like a quarter or two. It's fine. As long as you're not below the minimum level, you'll be okay. But if you start pushing the car and you're taking that corner really hard and your oil is sloshing from one side of the pan to the other, this oil that was up here, and let's say you actually take a really hard corner, it might actually look like this right? It might be the same amount of oil, but now that you're on an incline, the oil looks like this. So that would actually drop the oil pressure. And let's say you were driving this car and now you're over here on the oil level. And the next time you take a hard corner, now oil looks like this. Look at that. Now you drop below minimum. This is how damages occur. So always make sure you keep on top of your oil level and your oil changes, okay? If your oil looks dirty, change it. Don't question it, just change it. It's just the way it is. You need to keep on top of your oil. That is 99.9% .9 the killer of your bearings. All right, I'm gonna do something um, 
Dare used to do. If you guys know what Dare is, um, Dare used to show you these pig lungs uh, that are all blacked off from smoking to make sure you don't smoke when you're uh, in your you know teens uh, to deter you away from it. So I'm going to show you some pictures of damaged uh, bearings. And then I'm going to tell you exactly what needs to be done in order to fix some of these things to make sure that I scare you enough to keep on top of your oil. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so above picture is showing you damaged bearings. All right, you can clearly see what the damage is. The bearings should not have streaks like that on there. And obviously on the top right side of the bearing, it's not even holding its shape properly. So this is what happens when a bearing gets damaged. All right, next picture. The left side, these are um, journals. So a left journal is normal. So there's not, not many striations, nothing like that. So that one really didn't have bearing failure. But on the right side, that definitely had bearing failure. You can see that. It spun a bearing. Look at all the scores right on the journal itself. I mean, it's it all comes down to oil. Another picture here. The bottom journal here is cracked even. I mean, look at how bad the damage is. And the top journal, which is kind of halfway cut off in the picture, but it's nice and clean. That's the way it should be. All right. So I hope this really scares you into going out and checking your oil right now in your car. Just to go over the points again, make sure your oil is topped off. Um, make sure it's the right viscosity, uh, the right weight. And also make sure, make sure your oil pressure is okay. All right. Um, you could do that easily by uh, getting an oil pressure gauge or certain cars even have oil pressure gauges built into their cars. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And I hope this video comes to you as a preventative maintenance video and not, you know, trying to figure out how to fix your car after you've already done the damage. Um, please like and subscribe as always. And I hope to bring you better videos in the future. Thanks for watching.